And let's now continue. We have the pleasure of presenting uh, Dr. Jose Ernesto Betancourt, the Director of Defense and Civil Defense in the Ministry of Public Health of Cuba. We have the pleasure of seeing him once again, helping, uh, greeting him, and we are here to listen to you, Dr. Jose Ernesto Betancourt. Thank you very much. Good morning to everyone. As you have said, I will uh, now refer to the main experiences we've had in our civil national civil defense system and national health system. And in addition to what I'm presenting in the slides, I'd like to make some comments that we did not include in the slide so as not to put too much text up in the uh, presentation. The civil defense system in Cuba includes all uh, organizations, all ministries from the central state administration. And this year it's celebrating 60 years of experience. So in addition to the state organizations, we have the territorial governments, the NGOs and civil society that participate. And the preparedness phase and response phase for a disaster is led by the civil defense uh, office, which as you will see, uh, includes all our organizations, government, etc. It's intersectoral, and that's its strength. In our case, the Ministry of Public Health participates in uh, drafting the legal basis for managing disaster risks, and we are the main body by uh, where we approve and legislate the together with the national health system determine the intersectoral cooperation that is required to have the proper uh, protection measures in place. After having heard the presentations of our colleagues in meteorology, particularly the presentation given by Dr. Nolasco, their presentations have had an impact on us. We have organized for 15 years now, the studies on territorial vulnerability where all the health ministries and other institutions participate at the level of the provinces and institutions. And they identify the risks that not only the health services are subject to, but also the population. We, lay, we indicate the areas where there are uh, rain risks and coastal risks. That's important in our country because that means that in each place we can take measures uh, uh, that uh, address the risk expected. And the Minister of Public Health is the maximum person responsible, the head of the civil defense measures. And uh, on an annual basis, he issues a risk assessment for disasters for all of bodies and units in the health system. And the any disaster response is executed through a an operational emergency committee, which in our case is called the National Council for Civil Defense, where the Ministry of Health is a member and that system also has its own structure to manage the national health system in the event of a disaster. The, the, the response to uh, hurricanes, and, and this is what helps in our planning, the, the, we have a three phases uh, to determine a hurricane information where it's uh, at 48, uh, hours out, and then, uh, then as, as uh, uh, 
hurricane that is uh, 24 hours away, but we have a whole system for uh, warning, alarm, and uh, hurricane alarm. And each year uh, we issue these based on the public uh, health minister's determination. And there is an appeal made to all territories to uh, and, to, and, to, and let them know the risk that they may encounter and the uh, vulnerability that exists in that area so that we have full knowledge of the vulnerability levels of each institution in, in the field. And uh, the minister issues for each hurricane center as a season, a specific information. So we're in charge of each one of these phases historically uh, with the support of the defense councils. We determined the response to be given in each and every instance. Among the main measures that we undertake, the first thing we do is we update the risk reduction plans and all of the disaster areas. The activity that was satisfied because before the hurricane season, third week in May, 2021, last Saturday and Sunday, we conducted the people's exercise of a, a response vis-a-vis -vis hydrometeorological events known as the Meteoro exercise, which will be in its 36th uh, version this year. Each and every uh, hurricane season we have had it, both with the centrally uh, created organization of the state, the provinces and the municipalities, and of course, our organization. With regard to the medical institutions as part of these plans, they update the specific plans for to know how many beds are free in case of a coastal risk or a risk of uh, rainfall floods where we assess the needs of beds that might be freed, not just in view of the risk, but also in, in order to be able to assimilate and bring in patients. And it is necessary to have people who are familiar with this plan, where we know how many injured or intoxicated persons there might be, and thus deal, of course, with the large magnitude tropical event. Now in our territories and institutions, we have determined the actual makeup of the medical brigades that uh, give, uh, that reinforce the various areas based on the studies we have made, where we have seen which are the population groups that might become isolated in each one of the territories. And we have thus promoted the activation of uh, the uh, civil defense groups in the case of disaster situations. And this has had a tremendously important impact that uh, these groups and the mental health teams and by way of their psychological support vis-a-vis -vis the pandemic and the moments where there was the largest number of cases. These groups and subgroups helped in the recent accident uh, of a hotel in Havana where there was an explosion. Of course, it was a smaller number of people that were affected. The medications, the CIRA, whatever is necessary in order to care, take care of the patients as well as the supporting brigades. In situ for population groups which may have been isolated. We update all the information on the blood banks for every region. And as we had to do uh, with the view of this terrible accident we had in Havana, the explosion of the, in the hotel, the points for drawing blood and the blood donors were determined by way of a social assuredness program a group of defense of the revolution, which monitors, of course, the people having uh, different types of blood groups. 
also something which uh, is being defined and which is now clear in this Meteoro exercise vis-a-vis -vis the situation of the various situations that might come up and the problems affecting drinking water and the electro energy systems and the plants that make water potable. Uh, problems with the sodium hypochloride. So we work together with the Environmental Health Division and Epidemiology of the Ministry, determining the actual distribution of the inventories we have with um, time in advance. So there is something else which is determined year after year, which has to do with the actual situation of the logistic assuredness in these areas, in flood prone areas that might become isolated and may become of difficult access. There's a specificity here as 169 municipalities of the national territory and 40 of which 14 municipalities just have a polyclinic and they don't have a hospital, just a polyclinic. That's what I'd like to let you know, these 40 municipalities do not have a hospital. Therefore, in each one of these territories, as a result of the assessment of risk in every territory, vis-a-vis -vis each and every event, what will be the necessary needs of the, to try to forecast the needs that might exist in such territories? According to the social situation of every community, we conduct the selection and conditioning of places for uh, patient protection in the various institutions. And the workers themselves who are going to be working in the institution in the safest possible areas on Sunday. And perhaps we could uh, uh, socialize this exercise that we conducted at uh, one of our hospitals, which is uh, one of the main hospitals of our national healthcare system, where we have uh, dealt with the protection of patients uh, in the various levels of the hospital and the possible evacuation of such institution if necessary. This is done in all the territories, by the way, and it is updated year after year. Of course, surveillance and anti-vectorial efforts because after floods, as you know, there is always an increase of the population of mosquitoes in the area. We must update as of today and this year, we had 44 cases of COVID in our country. For 13 days, we haven't had any deceased patients. As of May the 23rd, 89,9% of the total population has been vaccinated with the full scheme of vaccines. And the second booster is already being given in many of the territories in our country. Throughout the entire process of this emergency, we have maintained and we have very active and permanent communication with PAHO so that we can convey uh, information regarding damage we have observed and see how we can forge ahead and try to anticipate what are the possible problems we might experience. Air transportation, sanitation, transportation, electromagnetic uh, units, uh, and also a norm of these electronic groups in our institution so that they may have at the beginning of the hurricane season, a fixed reserve that will allow them to work during 36 hours of continuous work is having um, energy power during that period for the various areas of the institution. Finally, I must say that this that we stated as to the main forces and media. This year, our minister uh, ratified that every provincial seat in the 
each one of the provinces that is must have a campaign hospital public entity and four medical brigades besides the forces and other media that participate together with the rescue and salvage operations together with the uh, firemen and the red cross they can each prepare a campaign hospital that should be ready and here you see the the hospitals in havana we have six surgical brigades in these institutions of havana and they are a true reserve of the public health ministry and they can be directed to areas suffering the greatest impact during any extreme uh, tropical event also ambulatory security or safety you have the Mejeda hospital and which has had to do with the training of all these uh, people in this unit dear colleagues this is the experience that we have had and we've wanted to convey to you uh, by mentioning the measures we have and steps we have taken so that this might serve even in a modest way for the preventative work that you're carrying out vis-a-vis -a, -vis a hydrometeorological event. Thank you so very much. I thank you all for your very kind attention. Thank you. Thank you so very much for this presentation, Jose Ernesto Betancourt. Very timely indeed to highlight information and clear indications, update and practices that have to do with the preparedness 